Blessings, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Magic and Meditation panel. I am your host, Lainey Savante Wolken. It is an honor to be here tonight in every month, particularly tonight because we're talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, one that is so vital and so important these days to learn, to uh, engage in, and to learn more about what the bigger picture is. So whether you have heard that meditation would be good for you, you've dabbled in it a little bit, or you are a complete yogi and you meditate for hours on end, you will garner something amazing tonight from our esteemed panelists who range in experiences from just beginning to been doing it for decades. So you're in good hands and you'll get all sorts of wonderful experiences because we will be doing some meditations tonight. I just want to also say that my company, Intuitive Wisdom, is sponsoring this panel, and it's an honor to do that. Intuitive Wisdom Records is a recording studio and a record label devoted to high vibrational uh, music and meditations. And we came out with an award-winning series of albums called Gulf Coast Meditations, which we'll have a special offer later on in the show. But we're very proud to be part of this. We have some of our spiritual recording artists on this panel tonight. So what I'd like to do to start us off is to uh, welcome Deirdre Selby. And she will be actually bringing us into one accord with an initial opening, uh, heart opening, centering. And then we will begin the actual meditation panel. So Deirdre, go for it. Thank you. So I would... Good evening or morning, whenever you come in. I would like to welcome everyone and have everybody start with just simply sitting comfortably and in a way that is comfortable for you, gently touch your heart center. And as long as you're not driving, close your eyes. And let's take a breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Now we're going to do something that is uniquely human. We're going to feel an emotion because we choose to do so either gratitude, and I am so grateful that I get to be here with all of you today, or appreciation to care for anyone or anything, or compassion, which is so important in this world and in our lives. Allow this emotion of gratitude, appreciation, care, or compassion to rise up from your heart center. Let it fill every cranny of your being, just permeate every organ, every cell, and fill your body until it is overflowing. Let this emotion of gratitude, or whichever you choose, fill you and spill over until it is filling your aura. Just feel this emotion so strongly. And when it has filled your body and spilled over and filled up your aura, I am so grateful. I have so much gratitude. When it has filled every every, the very essence of your being. Come back into your core and open your eyes and join us again. Beautiful. Well, that certainly got me in the zone. Thank you, Deirdre. You are welcome. Okay. I'm just gonna give a little bit of an intro in Deirdre and we will begin. Deirdre Selby has been meditating since 
she this often as she is building her business, Crystal Enhancements, which is a combination of spiritual coaching, enhanced crystals, and a variety of healing practices, all coming from love. Wonderful. Next, we have Tony Wangle. Tony is the owner of Be a Better You. She is a certified international health coach, a Reiki practitioner, a certified theta healer, and certified food healing oracle decorator. Tony loves to help others add balance to their lives through mind, body, and spirit work. Welcome, Tony. Denise Flood has over 30 years of experience learning and teaching self-care energy work. She is the creator of the program, Change Your Frequency, Change Your Life, that incorporates techniques like EFT and tapping, essential oils, and meditation. She's a spiritual recording artist and appears on several compilation CDs on Gulf Coast Meditations. And she also has her, a solo record called, uh, it's, it's actually part of the Keys, Volume 2, Meditations and Messages for Life's Most Challenging Times available on Amazon. Her passion is to inspire others to create their own personal heart-centered self-care practice. Welcome, Denise. And now, finally, we have Timothy Stutz. Coming in, by the way, from Spain, we have people from across the country here and uh, Europe. Timothy has been practicing and teaching multiple forms of meditation for over 40 years. He is the founder of Transformations and the Quantum Energy Academy. He's a master storyteller and has also authored over 85 fairy tales of the heart for children. Wonderful. All right. So you see we have an incredible panel here to share their wisdom with you. And throughout the hour today, we're going to have each of them give us, which, Deirdre, I think that was two minutes, about two minutes. Yeah. Just about. About two minutes. So each of you uh, throughout this hour we're, are going to step in and give us a little bit of their own uh, experience for you in meditations. So what I'd like to do now is just go around our panel and just get a little bit more about their backgrounds. So why don't we start with you, Deirdre, and we'll just kind of go Tony and then Denise and Timothy. Just give us a little bit of background, your history of what you do, how you came into meditation, how meditation makes an impact in your life. Just a, a brief introduction to the vastness of who you are. We'll start with Deirdre. Go ahead. Well, I started meditating just about 50 years ago. And I was young and have done it on and off for that entire time. At this point, I am working with my own business and meditation is a key component, both for me in keeping myself centered and in working with the amazing individuals that I work with who are mostly awakening to their spirituality. And in keeping them grounded and focused and helping them to feel good about themselves. Yeah. One of the things I hear from people the most is, I can't meditate. And that's because so many people think that to meditate, you have to sit down and stay still for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And they don't realize that you can sit still or even stand up and walk around and be meditating. And it can yeah. be 30 seconds. So, well, we'll talk a lot good. about that tonight, all the different ways. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Tony. Hello. Hey. So I am um, fairly new to meditation, um, although I don't know. It's been a couple of years, <laughs> maybe. But um, I, I think my introduction to really getting into it was. Um, writing a meditation and recording a meditation. So that really brought me into like, now I can kind of make my own stuff up instead of um, relying on other people <laughs> or guided ones. So, um, but I'm still learning and I'm still growing into meditation and trying to get, you know, to meditate more and longer. So 
But you bring a great perspective because people sometimes shy away of getting involved with meditation. You're on a panel here, but you, it, it's a great perspective of someone who's been doing it for 50 years, someone who's been doing it for uh, less than that, and how that it's that anyone can do it. And that's what we're going to in, invoke tonight is all the different ways you can do it, what it is, and that it's something for everyone and why it's so beneficial. So we're so glad you're here, Tony. I think we lost Denise. She's having some internet issues. So let's just send her wonderful good thoughts that she'll be able to hop back on. Go ahead, Timothy. Why don't you introduce a little bit background of your big background? <laughs> yeah, med meditation found me about 40 years ago and it was nothing I was seeking except I, at a very low point in life, I yelled out to God that if God existed, I needed to find God. And then meditation found me, God found me. Um, and when I started, I started med. I was a certified public accountant, and I started meditating for one and a half, two minutes at a time with an alarm set, so I didn't go over it. And that gradually built, and I was getting to feel so much better by meditating. I increased it in up to a half hour twice a day, and then up to an hour a day, and I've continued ever since. Beautiful. Well, I could say that I've been uh, involved with meditation, uh, all sorts of meditation since I was a child. Uh, and I've had, I've been an explorer of meditation and Eastern and Western and all sorts of different religions and philosophies and learning how, uh, what's similar and what's different. But it probably wasn't until a few decades ago where I got really into Hinduism and chanting and using my mala and I got a real direction on mantras that I really got into meditation. So I'm excited personally and professionally to be here and share this space with all of you. So I'll, I guess Denise, well, we're still standing her light. So I'll circle back. What I'd love to do is have you each maybe share a little bit more about your businesses and how you're incorporating meditation into it. Because I know that some of us do it personally, but here we are with the Holistic Chamber of Commerce and many of us teach it, we incorporate it, we see how it's a valuable tool for our clients. So let's just share a little bit more about how you are doing it, what you do and how it, you phase it in to make the world a better place. Deirdre, why don't we start with you? Well, one of the biggest places that we use it is in our fire integration ceremonies. And this is a keystone of our spiritual counseling. And it's hard to talk in a nutshell and I'm trying to be really quick. We you don't have, have to be really quick. Just, just yeah. share us about your business. So, I mean, some people don't even know what a Firestone ceremony is. So maybe just elaborate what that is so we know how to move into like how you use meditation. So as we have incorporated through many, many lifetimes, aspects of who we are have fragmented in order to protect us. However, as we're moving into this time of so much change, we need to bring these aspects back and bring them back into our center. And we use this fire ceremony to bring these and allow us to integrate them back through love. Mm. And we do this through a meditation. Beautiful. And it is a beautiful guided meditation that is done staring into the fire. And this is a key component in our business. So this is one of the biggest places where we are using meditation as well as everybody who does this then has an anchoring meditation that they use at home. Awesome. Wonderful. I'm very interested. <laughs> How about you, Tony? <laughs> How are you using meditation? Tell us a little bit more about your business per se. Um, so I do a a lot of a little bit of a lot of things, I guess. <laughs> but with my health coaching, um, I, depending on the client and what they're looking for, it, you know, a lot of people are coming to me stressed and um, unable to kind of um, get their mind to be quiet because there's so much going on. So meditation is a great way 
to um, get them to calm down. And I, I recommend that. And even if people don't have never meditated, even to have them just sit for a few minutes and do some um, long breaths is meditation, you know, so I suggest that and then they can, um, I always give them my, my meditation to take home with them if they want to use it as well. Um, and then when I, when I do readings, same thing, you know, depending on what comes up, um, if they get something where they have, they are told to be quiet and listen to the signs they might be getting from the universe, a good way to do that again is to meditate. So I just give them some suggestions and, um, I have little ones written here and there that I them with the well, so that's what I do in my practice. Your internet got a little funky for a second. Um, I just want, can you, okay, now you're back. Well, I just wanted to add to what you do, Tony, because when you're saying you're doing readings, the readings with the Food Healing Oracle deck, when you read a card, there are several um, meditations that match the cards. So when you're, when you're getting a card that's really showing up in a reading over and over, or there's a predominant card, you have to take stock of that. You have to take notice of it. And so meditation to go and have like, you know, homework assignment or your next best um, uh, level of healing is to incorporate some of these meditations and one of the cards from this deck, Tony Wingle had done. So uh, she directly integrates it into her business because she does the readings. And if that card comes up along with many others, she can employ those meditations to really give people a deeper dive. So uh, it's just incredible what she's done with her first one. Okay, Timothy, how do you incorporate this? And tell us a little bit more about all the different things you do, the academy and transformations and what you do with all your clients worldwide. Well, meditation is actually the core of everything that I do. Um, whether it's a course for parents or a course for children, there's guided visualizations, guided meditations worked into them. Every week I host a soul circle where people can get together and we meditate for a few minutes and everybody gets a chance to literally share what's alive for them in the moment. Um, and I work meditations into the one-on-one -on -one counseling and the quantum energy academy is a 18 month training program where people can either take it to increase their own self growth, or they can take it to teach other people, which incorporates all the different forms of moving, standing, sitting meditations that I've learned Reiki, other quantum energy practices about a dozen qigong and tai chi practices yoga so i can train somebody and to be a complete teacher of everything or they can add a few new things to their teaching skills which is perfect uh because that really leads me to and by the way if anyone who's watching if you have questions make sure you put them in the post so we will address it Leslie, if you can help Denise, she's trying to find her way back on uh, and she might need a little tech if you're watching, which I know you are. Okay, so she needs help getting back on. Um, what leads me to my next question is to just, this is throwing it out. We're not in any order, whoever wants to answer it and elaborate on it, but what I really, you know, a lot of times people say they can't meditate. That's the number one thing you hear. If, if someone says, wow, I have anger management, my doctor says my blood pressure is too high. I need to find breathing exercises. Uh, and they don't know how to move, uh, remove the minutia that, the, you know, calm, find, you know, remove anything happening with them. Uh, would you say that anyone can learn this? It, it's not a, uh, there's not a right or wrong way. Uh, you know, what would you say to that? You know, when someone says, I can't remove the, talk in my head or my laundry list of what I need to do or the deal I need to negotiate or whatever it is that is preventing them from finding their self and their soul understanding one another <laughs> who wants, you know, jump in. Mm -hmm. So I'll jump in. <laughs> Go for it, Tony, please. <laughs> so I, 
I, if I can meditate, anybody can meditate, <laughs> just say okay. that. But um, I, I really didn't think that I could ever quiet my mind because I do have that kind of keep going, keep going ideas in my head. And um, I don't know, I think if you just start slow, you just um, kind of like Timothy was saying, he started with a few minutes, you know, just sit quietly. And even if you have to put headphones on and listen to some music to get the background noise or the family noise out of the way, you know, just be mindful and, and only, and you just find yourself going into this state where you're much more relaxed. You can, um, you know, not trying to keep the thoughts from not coming, you know, letting them flow, but not getting stuck on them and just letting, you know, your mind relax. And I don't know, you just build up. You, you just build up, it. right? Yeah. So two minutes, five minutes, two hours. I mean, I remember I interviewed on my, my radio show, uh, Zeta Global Radio, Dr. Gabriel Cousins meditates for five to six hours. <laughs> so everybody has their own level and it could be five to six minutes or it could be 50 seconds, you know. All right, Timothy, any want to jump in on that question? <laughs> sometimes it's an open-ended question. <laughs> sometimes five to six hours of meditation feels like five minutes, and sometimes yeah. when you're first starting, five minutes feels like five to six hours. Um, Bingo. And I think I think from, I I meditate all day long from the moment my eyes open in the morning until I go to bed at night. So whatever I'm doing what Tony said, I incorporate mindfulness. So whatever we're doing, if we're just mindful of what we're doing, we're meditating. Um, we can sit and meditate and be quiet, but we can also meditate by doing the dishes and just do the dishes, not thinking about what we're going to do tomorrow or the next day. And just step by step, even getting up and walking between rooms, focus at the soles of your feet. Don't think about what you're going to do when you get to the next place. So just find ways to be present with each movement and each action that we do. I think that's the key word I was hoping you'd say, and you did, is, is coming to a state of presence and being right here, because that in itself takes effort. Not thinking about what just happened, the phone call you just had five years ago, five minutes ago, not what you have to do, but the presence in itself is the most sacred. And that in itself, requires a sense of meditation is to remind yourself that I'm here right now and nothing else matters. So I'm so glad you brought that up. Deirdre, you want to add to this? I think the most important thing is just letting people know that they are winning whatever they are doing. That if they are making the effort, that if they're willing to step in, that it's a win. That if they can quiet their body, that if their mind can win over their body, that if they're, if they can quiet that, I can't do this and sit there for just a moment, that it's a win so that they become willing to give it the effort. Beautiful. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I, I we've, we've indicated a little bit that there's lots of ways to meditate. So we said doing the dishes, walking, um, sitting, but there's also lots of different meditations uh, that people don't realize are actual meditations. As I mentioned um, on our album, and we in all of these CDs and um, We've got Gulf Coast chakra meditations and sleep meditations and um, meditations for children. All of our CDs are compilations of uh, you know, 10 people or so. And on there, some people are doing guided meditations. Some people are walking you through the river and through the woods. And other people are spoken words and giving you poetry and having you think about something. And other people are doing lullabies. Uh, 
Denise when hopefully she comes back. She did an amazing lullaby. So there's many different variations and, and I'd love for you all to talk about some more, but I'm just giving some examples that it's not, you know, I think some people think I'm never going to be able to sit and walk through the field and open the door and go down the stairs and look at the purple cloud. And it's not just about that. There's many ways to experience meditation. So I just want to kind of throw that out there and see what y'all think. There are some people who really cannot visualize. And when you are dealing with one of them, if you are trying to do one of those visualization type of meditations, they become very frustrated. Yes. And you have to, and it, it really is something where you have to take a different path with them. And so it really is necessary that the person who is teaching the meditation not be stuck in, this is how you do it. So those of us that work with meditation really have to have open minds. You know, let's, and if you go from, I'm going to guide you to here to let's go look at the clouds and see pictures up there, you're really doing the same thing. You're still asking them to use their mind in the same way. Mm -hmm. So feeling your feet as you take your steps is going to something totally different and would lead them in a way that they could then get there. I agree with you. On the other hand, there are the people who can't take that journey visually and there's other people who need it. They need to be led. And so there's something for everyone. Tony, were you going to say something? Because your meditation on mushrooms and magic and going through the forest, you are, I'm lost in it. It's lost in a good way. I'm lost in the moment of your expression and to be your first meditation recorded for the world. I mean, it's a mind blower. We, we continuously, Joanna and I are, are like in awe of you. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. <laughs> I still, I don't know. I, still can't believe I, I did it. So whatever. <laughs> it's, it's just not, doesn't seem real. Like it came from me, but anyway, it didn't really come from me, <laughs> but through came me. Through you. That's right. Um, but I guess, uh, I, I am one of those people that need to, or I tend to need to be guided. Um, so if I, write a meditation, I'm guiding somebody to do something. But Deirdre makes a great point, you know, not everybody's like that. So I think that as I grow and evolve um, with my practice and with helping others, you know, that's a, it's a great point that you have to think um, that not everybody does that. You know, because I always listen. That's the kind I listen to. That's it. So, you know, you you do have to kind of think about the other things. Um, but I do use music to as meditation as well. Like I was saying before, I'll just put on you know some nice music and just listen to that. Um, that's always a good. You know, a lot of people can relate to music. It doesn't have to be the soft. You know, music. Whatever kind of music gets you. Um, in that mood and you know helps you relax but mm -hmm. so those are my thoughts yeah i'm one of those that are wired that i do not visualize when somebody's doing a guided meditation for me i don't visualize what they're doing but the guided meditation actually allows me to get into a space where i do visualize and see things that i don't normally see in meditation it's just not what they're leading me through um, in fact, I used to, I used to, used to love guided meditations when I started because sitting meditation was always just trying to focus my mind, keep the thoughts from coming, watch whatever, but a guided meditation just allowed me to relax. And that's when I really had my most powerful experiences. Mm -hmm. Well, there's something to be said, uh, there's writing the meditations and then there's channel meditations and all of them are exceptional. I, I have I have tracks on all these CDs 
and uh, I channel. So I just go in, hit record, and whatever flows through me is, you know, a divine message. So it's, you know, being a messenger of inspiration and um, divine wisdom. And other people write out the most eloquent, eloquent um, visualizations where you're, you're, you're going on this journey that are, you know, quite epic. And, and I think it's great for people to try them all to see which ones. And and some people like 20 minute meditations and some people like, we call these five minute medicines because they're five minutes. That's it. So if you can dedicate five minutes to your well being, you know, that to me is a great start. So any other, any other thoughts on, this before we move on and, and and anyone who else is a, a teacher out there or questions have questions make sure you put post in the comment were you going to say something Deirdre? well i was going to say one of my favorites is going into the void and then keying in to the future i want to have and allowing it to come to me and so I, I like going into the void. That's one of my favorite meditations. Perfect. Well, speaking of meditations, and we're at the halfway mark, Tony, are you up for maybe giving us a little two-minute sample of anything? I don't know if you wrote something or uh, or you are channeling something or you have, I don't know what you got going, but I'm excited. <laughs> I, I did write something. Yes, so. that was good. All right. I hope good. it's not too long, though. I feel like it's, but I'm just going to do it. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're here with you. Show us, show us, show us where you want us to go. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is a meditation for your senses. So everyone, if you could just close your eyes, okay. inhale, hold for a count of three, exhale again, inhale, Hold for three and exhale. Continue to breathe at a nice, even pace. Bring yourself to a calm, quiet place in your mind and imagine yourself standing on a white, sandy beach right at the water's edge. Notice the sounds around you, the waves washing up on the sand. Perhaps some seagulls are calling in the distance. You see a school of dolphins playing in the water. It brings a gentle smile to your face as you imagine the joy they must be feeling. So carefree and peaceful. Feel the warmth of the sun on your skin and the cool water on your feet. Take in a nice deep breath and smell the ocean air. Take a seat in the surf and relax as a gentle wave flows over you. Taste the salty water on your lips. Breathe in deeply and allow relaxation to flow wherever it's needed. Let the heat of the sun energize every cell of your body. Take another long, deep breath to bring you back to present. You're feeling energized and peaceful now. Take a deep breath, hold for three, and exhale. One more deep breath, hold for three, and exhale. Bring yourself back into consciousness and gently open your eyes. I feel like I'm on Sanibel Beach right now. (laughs) (laughs) That was lovely. Thank you. Now, when you wrote that, was that easy to write? Did it just come flowing through? Like, how was that? Because that was very relaxing. Like, I really felt the salt on my lips. I felt the sun on my shoulders. I don't know how you all felt, but was that something like just came to you? Um, 
I had the idea that I wanted to do the senses, you know, like to, to feel and to hear and to touch. And, um, and I was like, I was trying to <laughs> fit the, that <laughs> or whatever, come up with things that um, would flow. And I wrote a couple different things. Um, and I don't know, I just, this just felt more natural than any of the other ones I wrote. Well, how did you get that? Oh, go ahead. No, I'm saying like, I, you know, like I was on a mountain and I was over here and over there. And <laughs> so, but this one felt like it, it um, just hit all the marks. For the well, it did. Joanna's saying, wow, Tony, that was amazing. Uh, we have to get that recorded because I can hear the seagulls in the waves. I mean, that's just a wonderful. Timothy, what do you think of that? <laughs> it was wonderful. It was very relaxing. And what it, what it brings up for me is that it's an example of how no matter what, everybody has a favorite place they like to go. So if you can just remember in times of stress, times when you're anxious, times when you're hurried, just take, that was only a few minutes. You know, just take a few minutes and take yourself someplace that's relaxing to you, someplace that's calming, and then move out, back out into what you're doing from that place of stillness. Agreed. And Scott is saying thank you as well. <laughs> uh, you mentioned, oh, actually, I think, well, some, uh, you had mentioned music, Tony, and I know we're big on music. But let, let's talk about other tools, other ways. There's, you know, other assistants to meditation. If Deirdre, maybe you want to give some, Timothy, Tony, and I'll give some as well. You know, there are accoutrements or ways to kind of create a setting to get you into, now I'm going to meditate mode. <laughs> I love crystal bowls or brass bowls which again is musical, but it's not music per se. The tones of bells, any of that to bring you in, to follow the tone. So you like strike a note and then follow that note to the end. Yes, great. Love that. Any yeah. others? Another would be a flame or a fire. Mm -hmm. and just stare into it and go with the flames. That That's one of my favorite ways to meditate is just to follow the flames or to follow the water, the ripples in the water. So yeah. if we're somewhere where there's water, I will just stare into it and follow that. Those are ways that I love to meditate. Tony, I see. Do you have a candle going in your back next to you? I see the <laughs> reflection. Actually, it's the fan reflecting in. The oh, it looks that's like back. I know. I look back there too. I was like, wait a minute. I put a candle on. What's going on? Yeah. Besides music, do you have any other tools that you like to incorporate when you're meditating? Mm, I think music is my biggest one um, because I it helps me <laughs> drown out the other sounds. And even, you know, the thoughts in my my head sometimes. I don't know. I haven't. I I have tried staring into a candle, um, flame, and that kind of thing. But I I feel like I. For me, I can't meditate unless I have my eyes closed. <laughs> so I can't be looking at anything. I have to kind of see the darkness. To do it. So. Okay. How about you, Timothy? Um. Music with headphones when I first started was a wonderful way to just drown everything out and focus inward with the sounds. And I love using essential oils when I start to meditate just to take me into a deeper space. Um, incense is always nice to have. And when I meditate now, I blow a conch for a few times. I like to just use that mm -hmm. sound to start everything out and clear the energy. Um, I love to hold crystals while I'm meditating, different crystals and see what those feel like. Um, Beautiful. I like tingshaws. I like it. I like to do a, a quick boom. That's just so 
striking of a sound. I, I, I love crystal balls too. And then for me, you know, I, I'm very much into um, my mantras. And so I have, um, I don't know, I, I collect malas. So I have many malas. And so for me, I love the frequency and the repetition of mantra. And I love holding and I like the process of moving from bead to bead with a mantra. And that mantra could be anything from um, a full Hindu chant mantra, or it could be, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, because it really doesn't matter because I'm just getting revved up with my vibration over and over. And then things come to me. And so for me, that's a tool that I really, I have malas wherever I'm at in my house, like wherever I'm in my office. And so that's a big part of my tool set is to have that. And everyone has a different, for me, I know I have a beginning and an end point. I have 108 beads on my mala. And so I know I'm going to say, it's okay. It's okay. Or if I'm, you know, clearing obstacles, I'll chant, you know, something from Ganesh, but whatever it is, I know I do it 108. And if that's um, a few minutes, then I might go several rounds, 108. So uh, and then I do incorporate candles and music and, and different things like that. But I, I like to look, um, I don't always close my eyes, but I could just look and watch the beads moving. And that's very, very relaxing for me. My brain can just get very present and just focus there. Any other thoughts on those things, Deirdre? I just gonna say, I love malas and mantras as well. Do you have a favorite? Om Namo Narayanaya. Mm -hmm. Do you want to explain what that is? The free flowing movement through water to just easy transverse with ease and grace through everything that comes your way. Beautiful. Okay. I have I have many, so I, I'm not going to name them all. But I um, I'm also a big fan of Hanuman, so I chant every morning the 40 Hanuman Chalisas. <laughs> so I, I, it's a big practice of mine. Okay, so uh, Tony, were you gonna say something? No. Okay, well, I was gonna ask you, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to even call you, uh, you know, say you're a beginner because I don't think, I think you're a natural born teacher of meditation myself. But what would you say best tips for a beginner? They've never done meditation and they were told this would help them um, calm down. That would, it would help them, you know, less be aggressive. It would help them with the stress they're feeling because they're we're in the middle of a pandemic. Would you, would you want to offer, well, everyone can, but we'll start with Tony, just some best tips to get going. Hmm. <laughs> um. I guess best tip to get going would be get going, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, just start. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was just thinking about the different ways um, of meditating. And, you know, like everyone was saying, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, okay, I'm going to meditate now. You know, I was just thinking of you have a pet, a cat, dog, whatever, just sitting with your pet and petting, you know, that's a relaxing great. and petting with your you know, that's a way to meditate. You're concentrating on the movement of you petting and, you know, giving all, giving all your love to your pet, you know, that, that could be, that's a really simple thing that people do anyway, you know, if you have pets, <laughs> but that's a it's great something, one. Yeah. That you can, um, you can do easily. Beautiful. Timothy. <laughs> 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 it's like, which one do I tell you? I got a thousand. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, you know, to, just to start with, if, if you're going to do a sitting meditation, find a space in your home, just pick the same place every day to sit and meditate. Try to get into a rhythm like other things we do in life. Pick the same time every day. Um, usually get up, get up a half hour early and use that time when it's quiet in the morning before the day gets going and just find just find flow into and find what works for you and sitting in one place the energy builds and so it makes it easier 
to enter that space because those energies stay there. And that I just want to use that to go into med meditation while we're doing it for ourselves. It's for all of creation. So these energies go out everywhere. And there's lots of studies done that show groups meditating in a city. The crime rate goes down. Um, global meditations with 7,000 people. Terrorist activities go down. So this is far more than just ourselves. We're benefiting all of life when we're meditating. I'm so glad you said that. It, it reminded me of the magic. Here, this, this panel is called The Magic of Meditation. But when the entire world meditated for the fires to stop in Australia and then the rains came, I just, I mean, my daughter lives there. Of course, I'm very attached, but my God, that was such a, a time where there were so many people doing meditation chains in groups and live gatherings. So, right, we're coming into one accord and, and meditation like brings us, plugs us into the circuit. If you're thinking like Avatar, plugs us into the tree of oneness, wouldn't you say? Everything's connected. And, and I'll be, between 1985 and 2015, I lived in the same house. So I literally watched my entire neighborhood for miles around change. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because I was meditating there. And if anybody was meditating there for that length of time, it would have the same effect. But we're literally, those energies are moving out and everybody is getting the benefit of that. Mm. Uh, Scott saying, great stuff, Timothy. Agreed. <laughs> uh, Deirdre, did you want to add to that? I know that we came into meditation when a young man came to work for my dad. And no matter what happened, nothing could flap this young man. It didn't matter how much stress was put on him. It didn't matter what was going on. And my mom went to him and said, Ron, what on earth is going on with you? How come you can handle everything that's thrown at you? And Ron said, well, I meditate. Mm. And my mom said, what on earth is meditation? <laughs> it, and the next thing I knew, we were all packed up and taken over to the local TM center, and we were all learning how to meditate. Wow. And it changed my entire family mm -hmm. in a very, very amazing way. My father quit. He said it took away his edge. Mm hmm the rest of us stayed at it. And my mother meditated for 60 some years. Wow. So it is an amazing power of change in the world. Agreed. And she, she did TM. She never strayed from Transcendental Meditation. She did her 20 minutes in the morning and her 20 minutes in the afternoon and did it exactly the same way she was taught forever. Well, I think that, you know, whether you've been doing it for 60 years or six minutes, as time has gone on, I think mainstream has cut on. Uh, there's now apps for meditations. Um, there's several, you know, producers of music. You know, we have an entire record label devoted to it. And however you do it, it's more accessible now than ever, which is amazing. And then also I just want to touch on, and then we're, I want to follow up just, uh, I can't believe this is just flying by this hour. But there is a difference between praying and meditating. So I want to kind of talk about that and whoever wants to touch on that because I don't, you know, I want to make sure you all get your feelings out of what that is into the cipher. I, I'm going to pray about that or I'm going to meditate about that. 
they are very different and some people might think they're uh, synonymous, but um, anyone want to start that conversation? <laughs> um, I, I have a, a, I have a quote that a friend of mine uses that I love. Okay. Prayer is talking to God. Meditating is listening to God. Exactly. Exactly. That's my input. Beautiful. Timothy, were you going to say something? I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. What, what, what came to me is asking, you shall receive. Mm -hmm. So there are times for asking. Like, I would have never found meditation had I not yelled out to God, do you exist? And if you exist, I need to find you. Um, so. Well, I, uh, t Tony, were you going to say? Um, I was just going to say, uh, I guess sort of the same thing. Like when I'm praying, I'm talking to God. When I'm meditating, it's almost like a, it's for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that when we're we're asking, like you said, um, in prayer, we're we're divinely putting an intention out, and and so many of us are doers, especially healers. That's all we do is do, is, and nurture and give and um, put out, and that's very divine masculine energy and beautiful. And so that divine feminine needs to be restored and come back to us, which is the receiver. So we really need to receive and meditation is that gift you can give yourself to allow that time frame for the universe, the heavens, the creator, the divine almighty God, Jesus, whomever it is to come to you and provide you the wisdom you need to keep moving. So there, it's a it's a beautiful dance and a beautiful balance, and it's all here for you. It's it's just inside. It just takes a little bit of active intention on your end to activate it and get going. So that's what we hope this panel did for you tonight is give you different ways and information to do so. Uh, all right. So I want to just kind of circle around and uh, maybe get some thoughts and I, i'm i'm crushed that denise can't be here but we're going to make this up somehow because she's such a valuable um contributor to this topic and she could be here with the technology we'll get that sorted but i will find a way to make her presence about meditation out to everybody because she she's like she said in the and i wrote said in the bio she's been on several meditations she's got a solo record about life's most challenging times, which I believe we're all experiencing that since uh, in general. And actually that album, The Keys, which is a volume series, was conceived prior to the pandemic. Spirit tapped a little message when I was in meditation, said you need to create something that is about helping people because not everyone can get to joy and love immediately. Oh, well, listen to that meditation and, and you're immediately going to be joyful and abundant. If you're going through traumas, there's a lot to get from point A to point B. And so the, the message I received was you need to do this album series about how if you're in a wounded state from a trauma or whatever it was. And Denise is one of those album recording artists. And so, uh, that's a wonderful series called The Keys. It's also on our record label. But then the pandemic hit and we're like, oh, okay, now we know why that album series was conceived. So a lot to be said when you're listening. So let's circle around. Let's just have everyone give a final thought in any special offers you would like to give the audience who's listening tonight and any in the future who will be listening to this recording because these continue on in perpetuity. So Tony, I want to start with you and then I'll go to Timothy and then Deirdre. Ah, <laughs> so um, <laughs> I was trying to think of what I what offer I um, did. It was a, it's been a long week. Um, so I thought that I would offer to help anyone who is starting out or who wants to start meditating um, by just giving you know my tips, sharing what I the journey I went through, and you know, how I did it and 
how you're doing it. How I'm doing it, yes. <laughs> so yeah. you're offering like a, a, a consult or a? Yeah. Okay, like, beautiful. I guess a, like a consultation session. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. All right, well, we'll make sure we put that in the uh, comment section as well as if you are a member of the Holistic Chamber, good for you. And uh, you will be getting an email to that. And if you're not a member, we would welcome you to be a member and then you'll be part of this wonderful community. Okay, Timothy. <laughs> Special <laughs> offer. <laughs> I was going somewhere else. Special offer um, on my website, www timothystutz.com there's six meditations that are free um that will suit just about anybody doing anything um they're under they're under the freebies so take take advantage of that and through hcc everything on the website all the courses all the trainings have discounts at about 50 percent off for all hcc members Gorgeous. See, another reason to be a member. Thank you, Deirdre. And I am in the process of updating my website. So I am making my offer through email. So if anybody would email me at crystalenhancements at gmail.com, okay. I will send them a free meditation about meeting your angels and guides. And I am not remembering at the moment what the name of it is. <laughs> it's okay. Is you can write it later and you can put it in the comments. Les Leslie has it. Okay, good. Well, she'll um, get it out to everybody. She's amazing. Yes. So, but it's all about meeting your angels and guides. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, I'd like to throw in an offer. Uh, as I mentioned, our our Gulf Coast Meditation Series is quite popular. And I'd like to uh, offer a BOGO. If anyone doesn't know what that is, that's a buy one, get one free. And I'll give you the link. But you can go to um, a particular website. I think it's Gulf Coast. I actually I don't want to say it unless I know for sure. But it's on Bandcamp. And you can purchase one of our CDs. And then you are going to write to me and tell me which other CD you want. And if you're saying, well, we don't use CDs anymore. Wow. Well, guess what? I can give them to you digitally as well, the entire full length album. So if you purchase one, you'll get a second one. And if you decide you want them digital or physical, I'll ship them out for free. And um, you can choose from one of our amazing albums. This one went number one on Amazon. We're very proud of it. And Denise also has specials and we will make sure that we get those as well. So uh, those are my offers. And why don't we do this? Why don't we just get one last few seconds of each of you to say something and then we are gonna close this panel with a meditation from Timothy. So Deirdre, why don't you just give us a final thought, then Tony and then Timothy bring us home. You know, meditation is such a wonderful thing to bring into your life. Everybody can do it. Everybody can meet the benefits. Just give it a try. Agreed. Tony? Um, I was just going to say that uh, it is meditation is something everybody can do. And you have to, don't wait your whole life <laughs> until you get older to, to figure out that, you know, if you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong, because however you do it is the right way. And, you know, just don't, don't think about it too much. I don't know. That's, that's my thing. Like, I was just thinking I was doing it wrong. I don't know how to do it. Everybody knows how to do it. You just have to... Um, Take a few minutes, relax, and and, uh, and just try it. Just try it. If you don't try, you don't know. All right, Timothy, final thoughts? Yeah, the, the, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual benefits are amazing. I mean, if you just think that med meditating reduces your biological age by 20 years, 
So if you think about everything that goes into that, so it's a reduction of stress, it, every, just that one, one fact and everything flows into that. So you're biologically 20 years younger with five years of meditation. And beyond that, meditation connects us with the essence of who we are, with God, with primal source. And there is absolutely nothing in this world that compares to having the elixir of divine energy flowing through you every moment. Very true. Thank you. Well, why don't we complete this and panelists after Timothy's uh, beautiful closing, stay on with me. And we thank everyone for, for being here. And we thank uh, HCC for this wonderful platform. And next month, before we close out here, we are going to be having a, a community panel. It's actually one month, one week later on October 28th about living a life free of toxins. And that kind of is a wonderful next step as here we are clearing our mind and meditating. And now we're going to live more of a toxic free life. And we have a wonderful panel of uh, HEC members for that as well. So thank you for being here, Timothy. Let's close it up. And to just finish with what you just said, one of the free meditations on the website is a scalar wave meditation of Gabriel Cousins that literally will clear toxins from your entire being. So in, nice. enjoy that. I've, I've been doing that meditation for about three months now. And after 40 years, it's taken my meditations deeper than I could have imagined. Well, we'll make sure you put your website again into the comment section so people who aren't members can get it right away. I will. So to close, if we can just close our eyes for a moment. Just allow your breath to be natural. The breath makes the natural sound of hum saw, which translates into I am that I am. So just as you're inhaling, repeat hum. As you're exhaling, saw. And just allow your entire focus to be on your breath, to be on the repetition of hum saw. And you can use that mantra, which has been empowered for thousands of years to empower your meditations and to focus your mind. And any mantra that you use, whether just repeating the name of peace, love, God, Christ, Buddha, I am love, I am light. Mantras literally just focus our mind on the truth of who we are. Thank you all for being here and enjoy the adventure of meditation and the adventure of being with yourself. May you flow easily into whatever you're doing next with the awareness that you have in this moment. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you everyone for giving the gift of your, yourself for being, being here. Blessings to all and good